this video or the legacies of these great people have touched your life, please press the like button as a sign of respect and memory. Thank you. We start with an interesting name and its interesting story. Turkish sumerologist and archaeologist Muazzez Ilmiyatçı, born on June 20, 1914, in Bursa, passed away on November 17, 2024, in Mersin at the age of 110. Recognized as Turkey's first female sumerologist, Chia gained international fame for her studies on Sumerian and Assyrian civilizations. She is also known as a prominent advocate for secularism and women's rights in Turkey. Muazzez Ilmiya Chia was born into a family of Crimean immigrants. Her family relocated to Chorum after the Greek occupation of Izmir. She began her primary education in Chorum and later moved to Bursa, where she attended a private school called Bizim Mektep. She entered Bursa Kuzmoal in Mektebi in 1926 and graduated in 1931. In 1936, she enrolled in the Hydatology Department of the Ankara University Faculty of Language and History Geography. There, she studied under Prof.Dr. Dr. Hans Gustav Guterbach, who had fled Nazi Germany. After graduating in 1940, she began working at the Istanbul Archaeological Museums as an expert in cuneiform documents. Throughout her career, Muazzez Ilmiya Chu made significant contributions to the field of archaeology and sumerology. She focused on the classification and translation of cuneiform tablets, helping to uncover thousands of documents related to Sumerian and Akkadian cultures. Her thesis on Sumerian mythology and culture established her as a key figure in academia. Muazzez Ilmiya Chu passed away from natural causes on November 17, 2024. Following her death, many artists and scholars took to social media to honor her memory. The passing of Muazzez Ilmiya Chi is regarded as a significant loss not only for her family, but also for the scientific community at large. Her techniques and research have left a lasting impact on the field of Sumerology. Chi's legacy will continue to inspire future generations of scholars and scientists. Bela Karoli, born on September 13, 1942, in Cluj-Napoca, Romania, passed away on September 30, 2024, at the age of 82. Karoli is recognized as a revolutionary coach in the field of gymnastics, particularly known for coaching legendary athletes like Nadia Comaneci. He gained attention for developing a centralized training system for gymnastics in Romania and later achieved significant success after immigrating to the United States. Karoli developed an interest in sports at a young age and enrolled in the Kludge Technical College to study gymnastics. He pursued a career as a coach and married Marta Eros in 1963. Together they became a prominent duo in gymnastics coaching. Bella Karoli became the head coach of the Romanian national gymnastics team in the 1970s. During this time, he coached Nadia Comaneci to become the first Neci secured individual gold medals. In 1981, Bela and his wife Marta defected to the United States during an exhibition tour and sought political asylum. They opened their own gymnastics schools in Houston, Texas, where they began training many young talents. Throughout his career, Curley achieved numerous international successes. He coached nine Olympic champions, 15 world champions, and 16 European medalists. He was inducted into the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame in 1997, and both he and Marta were inducted into the U.S. Gymnastics Hall of Fame in 2000. Caroli's coaching style has been controversial. Many former gymnasts have described his training methods as abusive. Bela Caroli passed away from natural causes on September 30, 2024. Following his death, many athletes and fans took to social media to honor his memory. The passing of Bela Caroli is regarded as a significant loss not only for his family, but also for the gymnastics community at large. His techniques and contributions to training have left a lasting impact on gymnastics history. Caroli's legacy will continue to inspire future generations of athletes.
French singer and composer Charles Dumas, born on March 16, 1929, in Cahors, France, passed away on November 18, 2024, at the age of 95. He is best known as the composer of the iconic French song, Non, Je ne regrette rien, famously performed by Edith Piaf. Throughout his career, Dumont wrote over 30 songs for Piaf and collaborated with many other artists. Dumont developed an early interest in music and initially trained as a trumpeter. He began his music career by writing songs for various artists. His breakthrough came with the song Non Je ne regrette rien, which he composed in 1956 and presented to Piaf in 1960. Dumont's presentation of Non Je ne regrette rien to Edith Piaf marked a significant moment in his career. Piaf embraced the song enthusiastically, and it became one of her signature pieces. The lyrics express a desire to reconcile with the past and start anew, resonating with audiences in France and beyond. In addition to this iconic song, Dumont wrote many other works for Piaf during their collaboration, including Flonflons du Bal, Mon Dieu, and Les Amants. After Piaf's passing in 1963, Dumont continued to work in music and collaborated with various artists. Charles Dumont passed away from natural causes on November 18, 2024, at his home in Paris. Following his death, many in the music community took to social media to honor his memory. The passing of Charles Dumont is regarded as a significant loss, not only for his family, but also for the music community at large. His compositions and contributions have left a lasting mark on French music history. Dumont's legacy will continue to inspire future generations of artists. A note to remember, sometimes personal information, such as someone's cause of death, is not announced immediately by their family or the authorities. When a cause of death has not been officially confirmed, we do not report on rumors. Every family has a right to their privacy. Thank you for understanding. Sadly, we continue with Jim Carrey's sister. Our condolences to the Carey family. Jim Carrey's sister and renowned radio personality Rita Carey, the sister of famous comedian Jim Carrey and a well-known Canadian radio personality, passed away on November 14, 2024, at the age of 63. Her death has been met with profound sorrow by family and friends, prompting heartfelt tributes on social media celebrating her life and contributions. Born and raised in Ontario, Canada, Rita was one of Jim Carrey's three siblings. The family faced financial hardships during their upbringing, which instilled resilience in them from a young age. Rita developed a passion for music and began her career as a radio host. She gained recognition as the co-host and producer of The Pete and Reet Show, where she engaged listeners with music and entertainment topics while pursuing her own musical career as part of the Rita Carey Band, which performed classic rock songs. Rita played a significant role in supporting Jim throughout his career. She proudly watched his rise to fame in Hollywood and celebrated his achievements. Growing up together, she often helped him hone his comedic skills and provided a sense of humor about their family's dynamics. As Jim navigated the challenges of fame, Rita remained a source of encouragement and stability for him. Their close bond allowed them to share both struggles and successes in their respective careers. The passing of Rita Carey is seen as a significant loss not only for her family, but also for the entertainment community at large. Her husband Alex noted that Rita filled everyone's heart with joy, promising to keep her memory alive. He also mentioned that Christmas was Rita's favorite holiday and that she had initiated a fundraiser for a local charity to help those in need during the festive season. To honor her memory, Family and friends will gather for a candlelight vigil on December 7, 2024. Rita Carey's contributions to the arts will always be remembered fondly and cherished by those who knew her and appreciated her work. Svetlana Afanasyevna Svetlishnaya, born on May 15, 1940, passed away on November 16, 2024, at the age of 84. She was a prominent figure in Soviet and Russian theater and cinema, best known for her role in The Diamond Arm, 1968. Her death has been met with deep sorrow in the artistic community, 
leading many fans to share heartfelt tributes on social media. Svetlana Svetlashnaya was born in Leninikan, now Jimri, Armenia, SSR. During World War II, her family moved frequently due to her father's military service. She developed an early interest in the arts, and later attended the Gerasimov Institute of Cinematography, VGIK, in Moscow under Mikhail Rom's direction. Svetlashnaya made her film debut in 1959 and quickly continued her career in acting. After graduating in 1963, she joined the Studio Theater of Cinematography and gained significant attention for her role as Anna Sergeyevna in The Diamond Arm. Her famous line, It's not my fault he came by himself, became iconic in the Soviet Union. Throughout her career, Svetlachnaya appeared in numerous notable projects. She reached a wide audience with the television series 17 Moments of Spring, 1973. She also starred in productions like Father Sergius, 1978, and Anna Pavlova, 1983, becoming one of the most recognized names in Soviet cinema. Svetlana Svetlachnaya's death followed a period of health issues that led to her hospitalization for treatment related to lung and kidney diseases. The passing of Svetlana Svetlachnaya is regarded as a significant loss not only for her family, but also for Russian theater and cinema as a whole. Her talent and presence on stage touched many hearts. Friends and colleagues expressed their sorrow over losing someone who brought warmth and joy into their lives. Svetlashnaya's achievements throughout her career and the legacy she leaves behind will continue to inspire future generations of artists. Her contributions to the arts will always be remembered fondly by those who knew her and appreciated her work. Legendary music producer Shel Talmy, born August 11, 1937, passed away at the age of 87 on November 14, 2024. His death is regarded as a significant loss to the music world, prompting heartfelt tributes from many artists and colleagues who remembered his contributions to the industry. Talmy was particularly known for his work with iconic bands such as The Kinks and The Who during the 1960s. Born in Chicago, Shel Talmy developed an early interest in music and began his career as a recording engineer in Los Angeles. His first significant project was producing Debbie Sharon's record Falling Star. In 1962, he moved to England and began working as an independent producer for Decca Records. Talmy is recognized as one of the pioneers of the British invasion in the early 1960s. Some of his most notable works include producing hits for The Kinks, like You Really Got Me and Waterloo Sunset. He also produced The Who's seminal album My Generation, which features tracks that have become staples in rock music history. Throughout his career, he collaborated with numerous artists including Manfred Mann, The Easy Beats, and David Bowie. His innovative production techniques revolutionized the music scene of the time and helped many artists find their unique sound. The cause of Shel Talmy's death was reported as complications from a stroke, according to statements from his family. They expressed their sorrow by stating, Shel always maintained his passion for music and left behind a lasting legacy. The passing of Shel Talmy is seen as a significant loss not only for his family but also for the music community at large. His innovative approach and production skills will continue to inspire many young artists in the years to come. His contributions to the music industry ensure that he will always be remembered as a pivotal figure in rock history. Fans and colleagues alike have vowed to keep his memory alive through the music he created and produced. Shel Talmy's life and work will always be cherished and celebrated by those who appreciated his artistry. Legendary radio actress June Spencer was born on June 14, 1919, in Nottingham, England, and passed away on November 8, 2024. She is best known for her long-running role as Peggy Woolley in the BBC Radio 4 soap opera The Archers, 
where she portrayed the character from its inception in 1950 until her retirement in 2022. Over her 60-plus years in radio drama, Spencer created memorable moments for listeners and secured her place in British cultural history. After graduating from Nottingham Girls High School, June joined an amateur dramatic society and earned a certificate from the London Guildhall School of Music and Drama. Her early experiences on stage paved the way for her transition into radio acting. Spencer's career took off when she began voicing Peggy Woolley in the pilot episode of The Archers in 1950. This role became a defining moment in her life and career as she became synonymous with the character. After briefly leaving the show in 1953 to focus on family matters, she returned to reprise her role in 1962 and remained a beloved figure in the series. Throughout her time on the show, Spencer contributed significantly to various storylines and character developments. Notably, the storyline involving Jack Woolley's struggle with Alzheimer's disease resonated deeply with both radio audiences and those experiencing similar challenges in real life. Additionally, she appeared on television programs such as Songs of Praise. June Spencer was married to Roger Broxham for many years and had two children together. The experience of losing her husband to Alzheimer's disease influenced her portrayal of similar themes within The Archers. In 2010, she participated in the BBC program Desert Island Discs, sharing her favorite music and literature, notably naming Three Men in a Boat as her favorite book. June announced her retirement from The Archers on July 31, 2022, at the remarkable age of 103. Throughout her career, she received numerous accolades for her contributions to radio drama and was honored with a CBE title in 2017. Her legacy extends beyond her performances. It also encompasses her sensitivity to social issues and the profound impact she had on audiences over decades. Renowned Romanian film and theater actress Elena Caragiu, born on September 18, 1937, in Bucharest, Romania, passed away on November 14, 2024, in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. She was one of Romania's most beloved theater and film actresses and is remembered for her significant contributions to the performing arts throughout her career. Elena Caragiu grew up in an intellectual family. Her mother, Elisa Ungureanu, was a Roman Catholic while her father, Herman, was of Ukrainian Jewish descent. From a young age, she showed a keen interest in the arts and attended the Pitarmoshi Catholic School in Bucharest. After completing high school, she pursued a degree in geology at the University of Bucharest. Karaju made her professional debut in 1963 at the Teatral din Ploiesti, where she began rehearsals under the direction of Valeriu Moisescu alongside actor Toma Karaju, who was the theater's director. Her passion for acting flourished during this time. She later joined Teatro Bulandra in Bucharest and starred in numerous memorable performances, including playing the Queen in Ibsen's Strigoi. Elena Caragiu also had a successful film career. She made her cinematic debut in Porto Franco, 1961, and went on to appear in significant films such as Rapiria Ficciarler, 1968, and Brigada Diverse in Alerta, 1971. Additionally, she featured in television series that reached a wide audience. Elena Karaju is seen as a significant loss not only for her family, but also for the artistic community in Romania. Her talent and presence on stage left a lasting impression on many hearts. Friends and colleagues expressed their sorrow over losing someone who brought joy and laughter into their lives. Karaju's achievements throughout her career and the legacy she leaves behind will continue to inspire future generations of artists. The contributions she made during her life will always be remembered fondly and cherished by those who knew her and appreciated her work. <laughs> 